What is up, Tamaris? How much do you think it's going to cost to get to tier 5 in Call of Dragons? My name is Shinchi42. In today's video, we're going to talk about the cost here and some of the best practices that you can do and what is T5 basically. If you guys like Call of Dragons content, consider subscribing and turn your notifications on. We also have a Discord and as well as TikTok channel. Links can be found below in the description today. Now, what is T5? Everybody wants to get to T5 eventually. T5 is basically the gold unit that you have in Call of Dragons. So you'll have T1, T2, T3, T4, and then T5. So for me, I have only unlocked T4, and you can see the T5 and T4 stats is significant. It boosts your stats greatly. You can see from 300 up to 400. So this is insane amount of stats. Now, the attack range of each unit will not change even if you upgrade the units to T5. And also the power here will increase as you increase the tier that you create your units as well. So if you are creating T4 units, the power of one T4 is four and the power of one T5 is 10 and as well as the engineering as well increases. So each unit will have a different engineering capability by the way, but they will all have the same amount of power in whatever tier they are. The infantry will have a higher engineering. The cavalry has an engineering of 4 for T4 for the mage as well. It's engineering of 4. It increases at 5 when it's T5. Now, there is no engineering ability for the flying unit. So if you're trying to build with your flying unit, it's not going to work. The flying unit cannot build nor destroy structures. So understand that. So... T5 is the highest tier of unit that you can have in Call of Dragons. You are going to have T4 for a while, and most of you guys will take a quite of a time to get to T5. Now, how much does it cost to get to T5 if you're going to spend money into it? Let's kind of talk about this here. So I spoke to a player in our kingdom who is 54 million power currently. He has T5 already. In speaking to him, he has said he has spent over 200,000 in rupiah which is a t currency in indonesia now this player roughly have spent thirteen thousand dollars to get to t5 in season one as you can see i am now in season two i have spent about three thousand dollar roughly i have a lot of items as well banked up in here you might ask me why am i not spending them right away because i'm waiting for a perfect time to make a push to win the events now my biggest regret is not pushing early game in season one because i could have won more because in season one there was only one server instead of now six servers combined there is more potential for competition so if you're trying to compete it is better for you to compete in season one right away and push fast because in season two you're going to compete with a lot of players so competition is higher now the stakes is bigger before the stake is lower now as you can see in our armaments ranking people are now scoring at 21 million rather than in my season one the highest score was just around 10 million so big regret for that one in my initial not pushing so that's pretty much one of my biggest mistakes here in call of dragons and i want to share that to you now to get to t5 what you need to do is to get your academy to 25 so to get to 25 academy you then need to get hall of order to 25 as well in order to get your hall of order to 25 you need all of your buildings to be level 25 but wait not really all if your buildings have duplicate, so for example, the hospital, there's four of them, you only need one of the hospital to, le to reach 25. And as well as your foundry, your mana, your wood production, your mint. So just understand that you only need one type of the building to reach a 25. And yes, you do need to buy the master blueprint, which is going to cost 2,000 gems to progress. And also to reach to T5, you need to work on to your research center or your college of order and you need to max out all of your economic tree before you can get to T5. And then you can unlock one at a time as you wish. My recommendation in here, if you are fighting in open field a lot, that you work on your magic unit. The Vestals is the best one to unlock first because of the fighting that happens in the game. Most of the open field people uses the magic unit. 
if you play tank, if you play the tank role, then I would say, yeah, of course you go for the swordsman, for the cavalry focused knights, and then for the marksman who does really well in the behemoth raids. Yes, you are. You can definitely do the ballista. Now, once you have unlocked all of the T5 units in here, that is the only time that you are going to be able to unlock the Celestial. You will also have extra marching speed bonus at the end, so it just gives it a little bit more faster uh, marching speed for your T5 eventually. Now, keep in mind to pay attention in here. As you can see, the marching speed of T4, it is 137. When you go to T5, it does decrease in here. So... Um, just understand that the lower tier units have a higher marching speed, and as you increase the tier, your marching speed will also decrease as you increase the tiers. Now, let's talk about the bundles in here. The bundles are very important to understand. Now, there are players in the game who will rush the bundles and buy everything out, max it out, and then get to T5. That is definitely something that is approachable to do. You will need to buy City of Hope. Well, first, you need to buy the beginner's bundle, which I don't have it here already. Buying the City of Hope is really good. Buying the Path of Knowledge is also a good thing. These two things will help you to progress to getting your buildings in as well as your research. And then once you've reached T5, start buying the March of Conquerors to increase the amount of troops that you have within the city. Another thing is that buying Time of Harvest, if you don't have a farm account, you might need to buy the Time of Harvest because you are going to run out of resources in the game. Now, another good bundle that I recommend for you guys is buying the Change of Fortune bundle. You can max this out once. Why do I recommend this bundle? Is because whenever you buy that bundle, you are going to be able to get really good rewards. As you can see, when I buy this bundle, I'm getting gold key and as well as some honor and, and as well as some gems. And I have these vouchers. Within the vouchers, you can use it to spin. Here, I would recommend to do 100 spin. Don't go further than 100 spin. You get you know, the heroes that you need, you get some speed ups, you get some resources as well. And as you spin, depending on your luck, you're also, you are also going to get insane amount of speed ups as well in here that can help you progress further into getting tier five units. Now let's talk about best practices here if you are going to be approaching into tier five. As you can see right now, I'm trying to cook my city hall to 25 right now. And I am not rushing it because if I do rush it, I will end up spending a lot more. Um, I would really recommend is to find a server that is not extremely full of whales. And this will allow you to progress at your own pace because you're not chasing far and fast on other players. So in my server right now, there's only a few people who has T5. There's, I think there's only about two people who has T5 or three now. or Yeah, three people has T5, I think. I don't think the chat person has T5 yet. So three person who has T5 currently. My suggestion in here is that be patient. Um, hoard some of the things that you have and wait for an event that you like and start competing for that event so that you can win as you progress into the game. So if there is an event where you can win 20 tokens or you can win in the strongest Lord, compete in those modes so that you will have a chance to get more value. Rushing your T5 without any event is pretty bad approach or bad practice, I would say. Another thing is that you should be going to your um, behemoths and try to find runes. If you see some runes, Grab the runes. Let's say if there's building runes or research runes, make sure to grab them so that it can help you to reduce the time of your research or building. And another thing that is very important within your economic tree, you also have this architecture that you need to max out so that you can reduce the time that is needed to upgrade your buildings and as well as the scholarship which is going to reduce the time of research that you are going to be doing as well. So these things are very important and it is a good practice that you work on these first before progressing into further research and further buildings in Call of Dragons. Another thing is being patient with your behemoths. So as you guys capture behemoths, as you will be able to see in here, we have buff, research speed 5%, build speed 5%, this is also going to reduce the time that you need for building and upgrading. And as well as into your VIP, as you can see, I have research speed plus 15% as you reach level 12 VIP. So working over your VIP is also helpful because it is going to help you to 
um, reduce the time that you need to progress on upgrading and as well as researching your tech. So another best practice that I want to recommend to you guys is your Alliance Center. So whenever you upgrade your city hall, make sure to upgrade your Alliance Center right away so that you can increase the amount of help that you can request from the Alliance. And whenever you upgrade your research and as well as your building, make sure to request help from the Alliance before doing any speed ups onto your progress. So besides that, at the end of the day, it really depends on your gaming. Don't be pressured by others to push. Spend what you can and just go on your own pace and have fun within the game. But if you get T5 first and early, you are definitely going to have a lot of fun as well as you can dominate within the game. Anyway, with that being said, it costs right around $13,000 based on um, Albatraz's statement. I assume it is somewhere around that as well. It seems a little bit cheaper in comparison to what I have did back then in Rise of Kingdom. So this is very interesting. Um, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again next time.